we are in lecture number 10 okay so lecture number 10 is vlan virtual lan or virtual local area network so what is vlan okay vlan means you can see this this is a single local area network okay i'm having a single local area network so this is one local area network so this local area network i'm going to divide okay i'm going to divide into okay three different networks okay for example you can see here vlan 2 vlan 3 and vlan 4 so i'm taking some pieces from the third floor of my office i'm taking some pc from the second floor so i'm taking some pieces from the first floor of my office and i'm going to make this as a separate vlan okay and i'm giving the name as it so this is vlan it and i'm giving the number so this is vlan number 2 and then so some pieces same thing i'm going to take it from the second floor third floor okay first floor and i'm going to make this as a separate vlan so now this is going to be a separate vlan so this is vlan 3 then the next set of pieces i'm taking from my local area network i'm going to make this as a vlan so totally how many vlans available here means we have three different vlans available here so a network you can have a network a single local area network so the single area or local area network you can divide into some virtual lands why what is advantage okay we will answer all these things okay later so the concept of vlan is dividing a major network okay major network means a local area network this is my local area network so for administrative reason okay for the administrative reason or administrative purpose we can divide this into small small vlans you can divide okay so this is the concepts of vlan okay now you can see what is vlan okay the definition for the concept of vlan so vlan means it is a logical partition of layer 2 network so you are going to divide you are going to divide that means you are going for a logical partition of layer 2 network then multiple partitions can be created you can have any number of vlan but there is a limit available we will see it later you can have okay you can do the partitions then you can have multiple vlan coexist so multiple vlan will be available at the same time now so this will increase a broadcast domain so what is broadcast domain means now every vlan will become a broadcast domain so you can have a separate previously it is one broadcast domain if you are not dividing into vlan okay if it is a single local area network means it is one broadcast domain okay you can give the broadcast to all the machines but after dividing this into vlans okay if you divide this into vlans the number of okay broadcast domains increased so in this case now we have three broadcast domains we have in this particular case okay so this is the first broadcast domain this is the second broadcast domain and this is the third broadcast domain okay so there is a concept so broadcast domain is increasing then vlans are mutually isolated isolated means they are separated so vlans are completely separated and then packets can pass only between them via a router so you need suppose I can communicate inside VLAN 2, you can communicate. You can communicate inside VLAN 3, you can communicate inside VLAN 4. Okay, this is lecture number 10. In lecture number 11, what we are going to discuss means how to communicate between the VLANs, inter VLAN, that means from VLAN 3 to VLAN 4, I want to communicate, or from VLAN 4 to VLAN 2, I want to communicate. So, this part it is called inter VLAN communication. If you want to do inter VLAN communication, what you need means you need a device that means you need a router, a single router you need. So without router, you cannot communicate between the VLANs. So this concept is called router on a stick, okay, router on a stick. So this is considered as a stick, okay, this is considered as a stick. So router on a stick, okay, this is the concept. So about this only we are going to discuss in the next lecture, okay, in lecture number uh, 11, I think, okay, in lecture number 11, we are going to discuss. So this is what, okay, a small introduction for VLAN. What is a VLAN?
now i'm going for the next concept benefits benefits of vlan okay benefits or you can say advantages anything so what is the main advantage okay what is the main advantage of the vlan means the first thing is security security is a major advantage what is that security teacher already i gave you an example in the last class if you take our college so in our college all the computers are in the single network that means the students computers teachers computers deanship computers then from the office okay all the computers are in the same network so if it is in the same network so anybody can access the other machine if you know the ip address or okay if you know the mac address so you can do some ch- some types of attacks so it is not a secured so what i'm going to do i'm going to divide into vlans so deanship computers you can make as a separate vlan teachers computers you can make it as a separate vlan students computers we can make it as a separate vlan so once if you make a separate vlans automatically students cannot access the deanship computers okay deanship cannot okay access the office computers office people cannot access the students computers so automatically there will be a security available so security is a major concern here by using okay vlan you can have security internally so internally internally means inside your network okay inside your network you will be having a very good okay security so this is point number 1 then cost reduction so cost reduction means here you no need to have any additional device because already you are having your own network so your own network you are going to divide into vlans virtual lans but only one device you need that is a single router so only one router if you have enough you can have a very good security for your concern or your, for your network so the cost is also it is not going to be very much then better performance so this will improve the performance of your network how suppose if there is no vlan i have 1000 computers in my network okay i have 1000 computers in my network a single network now a broadcast packet comes a single machine is giving a broadcast packet means so the broadcast packet will reach all the 1000 computers in this machine in this network okay it will reach everybody whether, whether you like it or not whether your host like it or not every host will get the okay will get the broadcast packet okay all the 1000 host in this network they will receive the broadcast packet because they are all in single broadcast domain now i made it into vlans if i make it into vlans okay for example i make it four vlans 1000 computers i made it into four 250 250 250 now if there is a broadcast here means the broadcast packet will reach only this 250 computers it is not going to disturb the other computers it is not going to disturb so automatically this will increase the performance your network bandwidth will be saved the cpu okay that means the resources will be you okay will be saved so there are a lot of advantages available making of a virtual lans there the next point you can see this is going to shrink shrink the broadcast domain this is the concept so 1000 machines available here all the 1000 machines available in a single broadcast domain this is not a good one so what i'm doing okay i'm going to divide this into four so i'm going to shrinking i'm going to reduce the size of the broadcast domain so here only 250 computers available in this broadcast domain so the next broadcast domain here only 250 computers here another 250 computers so only 250 host i'm going to have in each broadcast domain this is called shrinking so i'm going to shrink the broadcast domains then improved it staff efficiency that means a very good administrations you can have so that means the administrator can easily control your network then this is simpler project and application management so this is very easy to implement okay and lot of benefits available because of the vlan okay so this is uh, benefits okay what are the benefits of vlan we discussed in this now i'm going for the next one the next topic is types types of vlans now basically there are four different types of vlan available 
The first one is a data VLAN. The second one is the default VLAN. Third one is a native VLAN. Fourth one is a management VLAN. So these are the four different types of VLAN. Okay, now let me go to the default VLAN first. So what is a default VLAN means? By default, by default, all the ports of the switches, all the ports of the switches, what is the ports of the switches you take? I'm going to take a switch. Okay, so this is a switch. Okay, for example, this is a layer 2 device. For example, this is a 8 port switch. So 8 ports means there are 8 ports available here. This is port number 0, port number 1, port number 2, port number 3, port number 4, port number 5, 6, 7. So there will be 8 ports available in this switch. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So by default, by default, all the 8 ports, all the 8 ports, by default, it will be in VLAN 1. Okay, it will be in VLAN 1. This is called default VLAN. So, all the switch ports become a member of the default VLAN. So, which makes them all the port at the same broadcast domain. So, all the 8 ports will be in the same broadcast domain by default. If you take a new switch, I have 24 port switch, 24 ports available. All the 24 ports, okay, it will be available in the same VLAN, that is VLAN 1 by default. Okay, so this is called default VLAN. Then, what is a data VLAN? Okay, data VLAN. So, data VLAN means it is referred as the user VLAN. It is referred as a user VLAN. This is configured to carry only the user generated tra traffic. That means whatever the VLAN you are creating. I'm going to create VLAN 2, VLAN 3, VLAN 4, okay? So the user is creating different, different VLANs means that is we are going to say, okay, data VLAN. So by default, okay, the default VLAN is 1, okay? VLAN 1 is the default VLAN. So you, the user, if a user is creating a new VLAN, so we are going to say it is a data VLAN. Then I'm going for the next one. You can see, so this is, a small window by showing okay we are going to show the default vlan okay the command we have we already used this command in the last class show vlan brief so if you give this command show vlan brief so it is going to display okay you can see vlan 1 vlan 1 default this is default by default all the ports of the switches okay all the ports of the switches means fast ethernet 0 by 1 0 by 2 0 by 3 up to 24 so that means there are 24 ports available in this switch it is a 24 port switch you can connect 24 computers here so by default all the 24 ports okay all the 24 ports are available in the default okay in the default VLAN. okay that means in vlan 1 okay this is the Okay, a small command by using the show command, you are going to see them. Okay, now I'm going for the third. So the third one is, okay, you can see native VLAN. So the third one is native VLAN. So what is a native VLAN means? There is a very uh, important protocol here. Okay, we are going to talk about the protocol. So what is the name of the protocol means? 802.1Q protocol 802 or 802.1q this is a protocol so what is this protocol means this protocol is called the trunk port tr protocol this is for creating the trunk okay 802.1q okay now what is a native vlan means a native native vlan is assigned to a okay trunk port so what is trunk i i explained to you in the last class but anyway, I will repeat. So what is a trunk means? The VLANs can share a link. Okay, for example, I'll show you, okay, a diagram here. You can see this in this topology diagram. This, this is in VLAN 10. And this PC in VLAN 20. This PC in VLAN 30. In the lab part, we discussed this. Then, and this machine, okay, this is in VLAN 10. 
VLAN 20, VLAN 30. Now, I want to communicate, okay, PC1 to PC4, okay, they want to communicate means you can see, so up to this, your packet will come because this is going to be, okay, your own VLAN, that is data VLAN. But I want to go to PC4, okay, that means I want to reach, that means PC1 wants to reach PC4 means he has to go in this way, okay, this path we have to use it. Now, this particular link you have to configure as a trunk, okay, what is a trunk? Trunk is the path or the link which can be shared by the different VLANs for communication. So up to this, you, 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 will, you, you will not have any problem. Okay, you can do anything because this is your VLAN. That means VLAN 10. Now, from this part to this part, if I want to reach, I want to reach PC4 mains. So, okay, there should be some trunk. Okay, through the trunk only, okay, it is going to reach. Now, who is going to manage or which protocol is going to manage this trunk mains? The protocol is 802.1Q protocol. Okay, 802.1Q protocol. So this is a very popular trunking protocol. So this protocol will be used, okay, to manage this trunk everything. Okay, now you can see what is a native VLAN means. A, na a native VLAN is assigned to an 802.1Q trunk port. Then the trunk port supports traffic coming from many VLANs as well as the traffic that not come from a VLAN. So in many VLANs, VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30, all they are going to use that particular trunk. Okay, all they are, okay, it is going to use the trunk. Then the native VLAN observes and identify the traffic coming from each and every trunk link. Okay, that means this particular part, this particular part I'm going to say as a native VLAN. So in a native VLAN, okay, you will get the packets from different VLANs. VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30. So from different places, you are going to receive the uh, packets. Okay, that means packet from VLAN 10 will come this place. Packet from VLAN 20 also come to this area. Okay, packet from VLAN 30 also, it will come here. So a native VLAN is going to receive the packets from different, different, different VLANs. And it will be configured with 802.1Q protocol. Okay, this is the native one. Then management VLAN. So what is a management VLAN means? This management VLAN is configured to access the man management capabilities in order to do the management. Okay, you can see here, to access the management capabilities of a switch. So any switch LAN could be configured as a management VLAN. So you can configure any VLAN as a management VLAN. So in the last class, in the lab, we created VLAN 99. We created a okay, VLAN 99 as a management VLAN. So in any VLAN, okay, you can create, okay, you can make it as a uh, management VLAN. This is for the administrative purpose. So four different VLANs we discussed here, data VLAN, default VLAN, native VLAN, then management VLAN. Now with this, we are going to include one more thing, one more VLAN now. So that is the voice VLAN, okay. So voice VLAN, this is the fifth type of VLAN. So this will be configured, okay, to carry or to handle the voice packets because nowadays people are using the Vivo IP phones, okay, voice over IP, okay, Vivo IP phones are very well used in inside the network for communication. So it will carry the voice packets, okay, that means the voice will be sent through the IP packets. So in that case, we can have a voice VLAN, separate voice VLAN we can have, see. Voice VLAN is configured to carry the voice traffic. Voice VLANs are mostly given the transmission priority over the types of network traffic. That means this packet will be given more importance. Okay, it will given more importance or more priority because these packets are considered as Okay, the packets which which are which should be sent quick quickly. Okay, so these packets will be sent very fast from your network. So priority will be given for the voice packets. So communication over the network is not complete without the phone calls. Okay, this is the point what I'm telling now. So VoIP, 
VoIP is a very important concept nowadays. You can have the phone over the IP network. Okay, that is the VoIP calls. So the VoIP, we can have a separate VLAN for that, which is okay going to be the VLAN where all the packets will carry the uh, voice, voice data it will carry. So up to this, okay, there are three things we discussed. The first one is what is VLAN? Okay, just a small introduction to VLAN. Then we discussed about the benefits of VLAN. Then we discussed about the types of VLAN. So five different types of VLAN, okay, we discussed in this case. Now, I'm going for the next one. The next concept is VLAN in a multi-switched environment. Okay, VLAN in a multi-switched environment. So let me explain. VLAN in a single switch environment. Let me let me explain that first. This is multi-switched. Let me go for a single switch. So what is that means? You see, I'm taking a switch. Okay, this is a switch. So this switch is having eight ports. So there are eight ports available here. Okay, just take it as an example. So there are eight ports available in this particular switch. Okay, so three, four, five, six, seven, okay, and one more port. So I divide this into two. Okay, so eight ports available in this switch. For example, you can take like this. Now, this is a single switch. This is only one switch. Now, in this first port, second port, I'm going to take, I'm going to make this as a VLAN. Then, the second, sorry, the third and fourth, I'm going to take and I'm going to make it as a VLAN. Then the next four I'm going to take, okay, and I'm going to make this as a VLAN. So what is this means? In a single switch, in a single switch, okay, in a single switch, we are dividing the ports into, okay, different VLAN. This is VLAN 2, for example, this is VLAN 3, and this is VLAN 4. So four different VLANs, I make it, okay, sorry, three VLANs, I make it, but the switch is only one, only one switch. This is single switched environment, single switched environment. What is multiple switched environment means you can see. I'm going to take this is first switch, switch one. And then this is going to be the switch two, second switch. There are two switches I'm going to take. Here, from the first switch, I take two ports, port number one and port number two. And the second switch, I'm going to take, okay, one port. And these three things, I'm going to make it as a VLAN. So this three, I'm going to make it as a VLAN. Okay, for example, this is VLAN 2. Then, so here, I'm taking the third port. And here, I'm going to take the port, okay, one port. I'm going to make these two as a separate, okay, VLAN. I'm going to make it. This is, I'm going to say VLAN 3. So this is called multi-switched environment. Multi-switched environment. If you are going for multi-switched environment, you need trunk. The trunk port should be configured. You have to configure the trunk port. Otherwise, they cannot communicate. So two and three, they cannot communicate. But in this case, okay, you don't need to have the trunk. Okay, because this is available inside the same, same switch. If you are going for the multi-switch environment, you need the trunk port. Okay, the trunk port should be configured to carry, okay, your packets. So, trunk is coming into the picture. Automatically, if you talk about the trunk, okay, you need the protocol. So, what is the protocol means? IEEE 802.1Q protocol. This is a very popular trunking protocol. VTP, VLAN Trunking Protocol. Okay, you can see the example given here. So this is the example. So in this example, okay, you can just see this. There are three VLANs available in a multi-switched environment. What is multi-switched environment? See, from switch two, they are taking a port, they make it, okay, they are connecting here. From switch three, they are taking a port, okay, whatever the port, we don't need to worry about the port number. So they are taking a single port here and they connect a PC, they are making it as VLAN 10. So these two PC available in VLAN 10. The same example we have done. Okay, we, we configured the same example in the last class. Then these two PCs 
I'm taking PC2 here from this switch and from this PC I'm taking some port okay I'm going to make this as VLAN 20 this is VLAN 20 here so I'm going to take a PC here from this place okay from this port okay S2 port okay fast Ethernet 0 by 6 and here fast Ethernet 0 by 6 I'm taking I'm converting these two things as a VLAN so VLAN 30 so this is called okay it is multi switch environment VLAN in a multi switch environment so in this case 100 person you need a trunk so then only these two people can communicate this machine to this machine if I want to communicate only through the trunk port this is the trunk port only through the trunk port they can communicate so if you want the trunk you need the protocol what is the protocol 802.1q protocol which is a VLAN trunking protocol okay so this is the concept if you are having okay if you don't have multi switched environment you no need to have the trunking concept but if you are having the multi switched environment okay you must have a trunking protocol okay so this is the concept of trunking protocol okay so the next topic is controlling broadcast domain with vlans we already discussed this at the beginning of this lecture itself so vlans the one of the main objective of vlan is to divide the major broadcast domain into smaller broadcast domains okay so you can divide a major broadcast domain i gave the example 1000 pcs available in a single network okay 1000 pcs available in a uh, single network if there is a single broadcast everybody will re everybody will receive it all the host will receive it so this is un okay it is unnecessary one okay your bandwidth will be wasted your network will be wasted that means your time will be wasted cpu will be wasted processing time will be wasted there are so many drawbacks so having broadcast it, it's a it's a problem one now what we can do means we can divide the broadcast domain into smaller broadcast domains okay so this will help you in many ways it will improve it will improve your own okay that means your network's performance it will improve so every vlan is having a broadcast domain every vlan is having a broadcast domain of its own but it will be small okay it will be small it is not going to be a big one so the devices inside the vlan the devices inside the vlan they can have broadcasting okay the broadcasting is available so this is vlan helps to control the broadcast frames in the impact network so this is the point we already discussed so vlan is going to reduce the broadcast broadcasting okay uh, broadcasting domain okay so this is already we have done this particular uh, topic we already addressed this okay now i'm going for the next one the next one is tagging ethernet frames for vlan identification so this is a very important topic so what is this let me explain the context okay by using this diagram now you can see this here the trunk port which is the trunk port means so let me highlight by using the green color this is called the trunk this is called the trunk port now this trunk port can be used by vlan 10 vlan 20 vlan 30 so everybody they are going to share this trunk okay there is no doubt everyone is going to share that particular trunk port now in this trunk okay see vlan 10 okay just listen the concept if you if you understand things will become easy now i'm going to send a packet from here this is a packet from vlan 10 so the packet okay i want to send it okay to this particular person because they are in the same vlan now the packet is going here to the s2 okay it will go to the it will reach the s2 from s2 it will be forwarded in the trunk port then in the trunk port okay it is going to reach the next pc that means next switch and it should be given to the pc4 okay it should be given to pc4 this is what exactly happening inside inside the network now if you see in this case how this machine that means how this particular switch is going to differentiate okay everybody is sending for example 
VLAN 20 is also sending a packet. VLAN 30 is also sending a packet. Okay, different packets are coming to the switch mains. How it will differentiate? This is from 10. This is from 20. This is from 30. This packet. How it will be differentiated means this is the concept. So this will be differentiated by 802.1Q protocol. So now the 802.1Q protocol, this protocol is going to add something called a tag. Tagging concept it is going to add. What is the tagging? Now you see. This is ordinary Ethernet frame. This is the ordinary Ethernet frame. Ethernet frame means everybody, all the host. Okay, see here. This person, okay, or 10 or 20 or 30, okay, PC1 or PC2 or PC3, everybody is going to send a frame like this. What is available in the frame? This is your data. The data is available in the frame. And then source MAC address and destination MAC address available in the frame. Now, this frame is going to reach, okay, the switch. Okay, what is the switch means? Switch S2, it is going to reach. Now, from S2 to S1, we already configured the trunk. That means VTP, VLAN trunking protocol is running here. Now, if the frame reaches S2, now in that frame, okay, that means your 802.1Q protocol, it is going to add something called a tag. Okay, a tag will be added. Okay, it is going to add a tag. What is this tag means? This tag is used to identify from which VLAN it is coming. Okay, you can see. So inside that tag, I'm going to have, okay, a tag is added here. So inside that tag, I'm going to have the VLAN identifier. So the VLAN identifier will be available here. So this is called the tagging concept. So if a frame is reaching, if a frame is reaching the switch, okay, yes to here, okay, from either 10 or 20 or 30, from any VLAN, if it reaches the S2 mains, so here we have the 802.1 protocol. That means the VTP trunking protocol is running. The trunking protocol is going to tag. It is going to attach a tag to the frame. Inside the tag, what is available? Inside the tag, we have the VLAN information. So the VLAN information is available inside this. So using this, you can identify this belongs to which VLAN. Okay, this belongs to which VLAN. So the VLAN identifier, so automatically you can see the frame is coming from here. S2 is attaching a tag. Okay, inside the tag, what is the VLAN? VLAN 10. Now the packet is moving. The packet is moving in the native VLAN or the packet is moving in the trunk. Then it reaches S3. So in S3, they are going to see the tag. So in S3, trunking protocol is running. So it is going to see what is your tag, show your tag, yes, this is my tag. In the tag, what is the VLAN? VLAN number 10. Okay, now VLAN number 10 means it will forward it to the PC4. So this is the concept. So what is this means? In, okay, if you, if you have, if you have a trunk, automatically the 802 point protocol, it is going to do, okay, what it is going to do? It is going to do a tagging, tagging the frames attaching the tag okay you can see the theory part now so frame tagging is a process what is frame tagging means it is a process of adding the vlan identification header to the frame so it is going to add the vlan identifier okay vlan identifier will be added then it is used to properly transmit okay multiple vlan frames through a trunk link so whenever you use a multiple VLAN and you are having a trunk means this is a very important thing. Now, who is going to take care of all these things? Okay, a yeah. different tagging protocol exists. 802.1Q. So this is one of the very important protocol. So this is going to take, take care of the trunking concept. Okay, the trunking concept. So this is the remaining thing. You can just go through it. I'm telling the the core, the concept I already informed, okay, I just convey to you. So, there is a tag, a tag will be added. So, who is going to add this means, it is 802.1Q protocol. This will be done only in the trunk, okay, only in the trunk. Okay, now, I'm going for the next one. The next concept is, 
native VLAN and 802.1Q tagging. Okay, where this tagging will be done. So it will be done in the VLAN native. That means native VLAN. So native VLAN, VLAN means wherever you have configured the trunk. Wherever you have configured the trunk, so that is going to be the native VLAN. So in the native VLAN only 802.1Q tagging is going on. So tagging means nothing, no need to worry about it. Tagging is adding a tag field to the frame. What is available inside the tagging? Inside the tag, we have the VLAN identifier. So using that, you can identify, okay? You can identify the uh, which VLAN it belongs, okay? So that is the important concept here. Now, I'm going for the next one. The next one is VLAN assignment, okay? What is VLAN assignment, okay? This is regarding the numbers, okay? For example, you can see, we are discussing about the switches, catalyst switches, 2960 and 3560 series, okay? No need to memorize all these things. This is the number, the switch numbers, okay? There are different switches available, models. We can say it is switch model. Catalyst 2960 and Catalyst 3560 series. If you take this model of switches, you can have over 4,000 VLANs you can have. It is supporting 4,000 different VLANs. Okay, we can have. Now, this VLANs, we can divide into two categories. Okay, so no need to memorize the numbers. Okay, this serial numbers and all, you don't need to memorize. So, modern switches, we can take like this. Modern switches, it supports around 4,000 VLANs, it supports. So, this 4,000 VLANs, we are dividing into two categories. Okay, we are, we are dividing into two categories, two groups. What is the two categories means? The first group is the normal range v, VLAN and the second group is extended range VLANs. Okay, normal range. Okay, normal range VLANs and the extended range VLANs. So what is the normal range means? From 1 to 1005. Okay, 1 to 1005, this is called the normal range, normal VLAN. Okay, in that one is the default. One is the default VLAN. So you can start from 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 1005, 1000, sorry, 1005, up to this you can have. Then extended VLAN means from 1006 to 4096, okay, 4096. So this is up to, okay, uh, what to say, this is called the extended range of VLAN. Now, if you are going for the normal range VLAN, okay, in the normal range VLAN, the configurations are stored in the VLAN.dat in the flash memory, whatever the configurations you are doing, the configuration will be stored as VLAN, VLAN dat. This is your file name. Okay, this will be saved as VLAN, VLAN dat, DAT, okay, data file, and it will be stored in the flash memory. Okay, it will be stored in the flash memory. So if you go for the extended range, in the extended range, configurations are stored in the, okay, running configuration. That means it will be stored in the NVRAM. Okay, so these are all the uh, differences. So in the normal range, it will be stored in the flash. In the extended range of VLAN, okay, the configuration will be stored in the NVRAM. Then, VTP can only learn and store normal range VLANs. VTP does not learn the extended range VLAN. So that means VTP, okay, VLAN trunking protocols. It can learn and store. It will learn and store only the normal VLANs. It will learn and store. So VTP protocol, VLAN trunking protocol, that is H 2.1 q it is not going to learn and store the extended VLANs. Okay, so these are the differences. But in most of the cases, okay, we will go only for the normal range. Okay, so even in our lab bundle, we are going to use only the normal range of VLANs only. Okay, so we are not going for the extended range of VLANs. Okay, now this is the lab. We already configured this lab, okay, in the last class. If time permits, I'm ready to do it again. Okay, let me see. First, I want to complete the lecture. So if time permits, I will do it today. Okay, or tomorrow, I will do the same lab. And in this lab, we will go for the inter-VLAN communication. Okay, last class, we have done the lab in which we have done the communication between the VLANs, okay? That means from VLAN to VLAN, from this VLAN to this VLAN, okay, we can communicate. So we configured like that. But in the next lecture, that means in the next class, 
we how to have a co communication from vlan 10 to vlan 20 okay we have to do communication like this this is called inter vlan communication that is the le next lecture for inter vlan communication you have to configure a router here okay there should be a router that is called the router on the stick you have to go for like okay the concept like this okay and also you have to make the trunk okay trunk necessary trunks you have to make and you can okay communicate with this now so this lab we already completed but anyway i want to tell the steps what are the steps available if you want to create a vlan what are the steps available so about that i'm going to talk okay i'm going to uh, explain now so what is the first step means you are going to design the topology diagram okay so design the topology diagram number one then number two step number two is assign the ip address to all the pcs so you are going to give the ip address to all the pcs you no need to give any ip address for your switch okay only for the pcs for all the host whatever the ip address you can fix the ip address for all the host then the next one is show commands so what is the show commands means you can see okay that means you can see okay some informations about the information about the lands vlans okay for example show vlan so if you give this command show vlan it will display all the vlan in your switch so if you are not giving if you are not okay if you are not configured any vlan by default all the ports okay by default all the ports this is what we have seen here in the same lecture i think in page number 1 and 2 i think see this is so if you use the command show vlan or show vlan brief if you give this command so it is going to display all the port numbers okay all the 24 ports by default they are in, in vlan 1 okay or if you have created any vlan you can find the number okay vlan 2 vlan 3 vlan 4 so if you okay if you have already created any vlan you can find the numbers okay whatever the vlan you created you can find it here so this is the show commands the show commands will display okay the vlans show vlan show vlan brief or any particular vlan i want to display means you can use id show vlan id 1 show vlan id 2 so only that particular vlan the information about only that particular vlan will be displayed okay so this is the uh, third step so the third step is simply just you are going to display the things then the next step is you have to create the vlan create and name the vlans so how to create you how to go to the global configuration mode okay you have to go to the global configuration mode so global configuration mode means okay you have to go for the command enable then config terminal you are giving the command enable config terminal then so after giving the enable and config terminal okay you are in the global configuration mode okay you can see config so this is global configuration mode so in global configuration mode you can create the vlan okay so what is the command the command to create the vlan is just vlan then you can give any number okay you can give any number but one you cannot give vlan one you cannot because it is already it is a default i want to delete vlan one you cannot so default vlan you cannot delete you cannot change the name okay nothing you cannot do anything so vlan 2 vlan 3 vlan 4 so up to this you can start okay and you can go for okay we saw the ranges you can see the normal range vlan extended vlan so up to 4096 okay you can give so starting from 2 to 4096 but for the students okay you are all okay the practicing okay you are all in the initial stage so for the students okay we recommend only for the normal range vlan from 1 to 1005 okay no need to go for more than that now so you can give any vlan number here i'm giving vlan 10 vlan 10 so if i just enter you can see the prompt the prompt is changed to vlan so the vlan is created okay just the command is very simple vlan 10 vlan 20 so vlan is created 
So once the VLAN is created, now I'm going to change the name of my VLAN. I can give you a name just for an identification. You can give a name for your VLAN. So the command is name. Then you can use any name. I'm giving here a staff. S-T-A-F-F. -F. Staff is the name. So automatically the name of the VLAN is staff. So this is the step. Okay. The next step is creating the VLAN. How to create the VLAN? You can use VLAN and you can give a number. You have to do it in the global configuration mode. Okay. You have to do it in the global configuration mode. Then the next concept. Okay. The next one is you see I'm creating one more VLAN. So this is VLAN 20. I'm creating the same steps I'm following. Then I create one more VLAN, VLAN 30. I'm doing, okay, I'm giving the name as guest. Then I create one more VLAN, it is VLAN 99. I'm going to make this as a management VLAN. So four VLANs, okay, we created. Okay, VLAN 10, VLAN 20, 30, and 99. So four VLANs we created up to this. Then I'm going to display all the VLAN, show VLAN brief. So this will display your VLANs, whatever the VLANs you created, you can see here. Then the next step is, okay, this is, uh, I forgot the step number. You can, you can just uh, see the steps in the paper. Now I'm going for the next step. So what is the next step means? The next step is you have to assign the port numbers. This is very, very important. So many students, they think if I create VLAN finished, no. VLAN is created. Then what is the next step means? You see, I take a switch. Okay, this is a switch. So here, the first one, okay, I want to make it as VLAN 1. I make a PC. I want to make this as a VLAN 1. Sorry, not VLAN 2 or VLAN 10. Okay, make it 10. So the next port I'm taking, I'm going to connect it with a PC. I'm going to make this as a VLAN 20, VLAN 30. So what we have done so far, we just, okay, we enter into the switch and we created the VLANs. VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30 we created. The next step is you have to assign this port, port number, fast Ethernet 0 by 0. Okay, you go to VLAN 10. Port number, fast Ethernet 0 by 1. Okay, this is 0 by 0, this is 0 by 1. You go to VLAN 20. So the next one. Port number, fast Ethernet 0 by 3, you go to VLAN 30. This is very important step. So this is called assign the VLAN to the ports. Okay, assign, sorry, assign ports to VLAN. This is wrong actually. Okay, this should not be like this. Assign ports to VLAN. Okay, assign ports to VLAN, not assign VLAN to ports. That is wrong. So you can see, fast Ethernet 0 by 1. Fast Ethernet 0 by 1, I'm going to assign, okay, I'm going to put it in VLAN 10. Fast Ethernet 0 by 2, I'm going to put it in VLAN 20. Fast Ethernet 0 by 3, I'm going to put it in VLAN 30. So this is called assigning, okay. First, simply you are creating, then you have to assign. Now, what is the command? What is the command to assign this means? You can see the commands. Again, I'm going for enable. I'm going for the config terminal, that means global configuration mode. Then inside the global configuration mode, I want to go to the particular interface. Okay, see, fast Ethernet 0 by 1. Okay, fast Ethernet 0 by 1. This is the name of the interface. So this interface, I want to put it in the VLAN 10. Okay, I want to assign VLAN 10 for this. So what I'm doing, you have to go to the interface. Okay, you have to go to the interface. Okay, what is that means? Fast Ethernet 0 by 1. Fast Ethernet 0 by 1. Well and good. Then, I am inside the interface. You can see config if, if. So, inside config, that means in the global configuration mode, from the global configuration mode, you are moving to the specific configuration mode. Okay, specific configuration mode. Now, in the specific configuration mode, I'm going to tell switch port. Okay, this particular port. Okay, access. What is this access? We will see it later. Okay, but access is a keyword. It is a mode. So, access VLAN 10. So, that means this interface, fast Ethernet 0 by 1, I want to make it, okay, as VLAN 10. So, switch port, that particular port. 
I'm going to make it as access mode. I'm going to put it in VLAN 10. So now automatically, so this port, okay, this particular port, now it will become VLAN 10. So this is assigning the port to the VLAN, okay, assigning the port to the VLAN. There, I go to the next one. We'll see one more. Okay, now I just give exit. Okay, if you give exit, you will come out from that. You will be in the global configuration mode. Okay, you will be in the config. Now, I'm typing interface fast ethernet 0 by 3. So, 0 by 3 means I'm going for the next port. Now, this I want to put it in the 30. So, I'm going to use a command switch port. Access VLAN 30. Okay, so this is something, what is this access we are going to talk about, okay, at the end of this lecture, we are going to talk about this. So this is called a mode, okay, you are putting, you are changing the mode of the port. So access VLAN 30. So for all the three VLANs, okay, I'm assigning, okay, I am assigning the ports to the VLANs. So if you complete this, almost 60 to 70 percent of your work will be finished. Okay, everything, okay, 60, 60 to 70 percent of your work will be done. Then, so first step is you created the VLAN. The second step is you are assigning the ports to the VLAN. Okay, you are assigning the ports to the VLAN. Then, the next step is you have to configure, okay, you have to configure the trunk. Okay, you have to configure the trunk. Now, you can say configuring the trunk okay on s yes, zero and use vlan as the native vlan so configuring the trunk okay i just show you the topology diagram you can see this topology diagram so in this topology diagram okay so in all the routers sorry all the switches you go to all the switches you create the vlan okay you go to the switch you create the vlan then you can assign the port okay that means fast ethernet zero by zero vlan one Fast Ethernet 0 by 2, VLAN 2, VLAN 3, okay, like this. Here also you can do the same thing. After that, you want to configure this as a trunk. This place, you want to make it as a trunk. Then only they can communicate. Now, I am going for this, okay, that means, what is the number? Series, switch 0, yeah. So, I am going for switch 0 and switch 0, I want to make it as a, uh, I want to configure the trunk in that, okay. Now, what is the command for that to make it okay trunk i'm giving the overall idea okay the, the uh, overall scenario i'm giving so then only you will understand what is this okay now i'm going for trunking configuring trunking on s0 and use vlan 99 as the trunk as a native vlan okay now you can see i'm going for the enable then config terminal i am in switch 0 switch 0 means the switch in the middle now I'm going to the global configuration mode, config. So in the global configuration mode, okay, you can see the interface range fast ethernet 0 by 2. So what is that? You see, you know the command interface. In the previous one, we saw that interface fast ethernet 0 by 1, fast ethernet 0 by 2. But now you can see I'm taking the range. So range means, that means fast ethernet 0 by 1 to 2. What is the meaning? Fast Ethernet 0 by 1, fast Ethernet 0 by 2. So these two things I want to make it as, okay, I'm going to make it as a range. I want to make it this as a trunk. So you no need to do one by one, fast Ethernet 0 trunk, fast Ethernet 2 trunk, fast Ethernet 3 trunk, no need. You can make it as a range from 0, okay, 0 by 1, 2, 2 or 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, okay. So I, I write it here if you're not understanding. I just write it here, see, okay, so you can, you can do like this also, suppose fast ethernet, I just write fast ethernet, 0 by, okay, 1, 2, 2, so what is the meaning, so this is equal to fast ethernet 0 by 1, fast ethernet 0 by 2, this is the meaning. So if you want to increase the range, you can increase, okay. So how you can increase, you can change this number, I make this 5. So what is the meaning now, fast ethernet 0 by 1, 0 by 2, 0 by 3, 0 by 4, 0 by 5, up to 5. So that means you make, okay, all the, all the interfaces, you are making it as a single range. So no need to repeat again and again the command. 
okay so if you make it as a range only one time if you give the command it is enough so now i'm going for okay i i make the range okay i'm making the range yes i i make the range okay the range is from 0 to 2 okay 0 to 2 okay just one minute okay so you can make this as a range so once if you make this as a range okay you no need to configure okay you no need to do it many times so only one time if you give the command automatically it will be applicable to all the interfaces okay it will be applicable to all the interfaces in that particular range now so i make the range then okay you see the prompt config if range okay you are getting okay the prompt the prompt itself it is telling you are in the range mode so specific configuration mode it is in the range then you are going to say switch port okay switch port mode okay you are going to make it as a trunk so switch port mode trunk okay so if you make it trunk automatically everything will be okay reacting as a trunk that means in all all the vlans the packets from all the vlans can move there okay the packets from all the vlans can move it okay can move in that particular trunk then you can see the next one is switch port trunk native vlan 99 so what does that means okay switch port trunk that means the trunk i want to put it in the native vlan okay native vlan 99 so we already discussed what is native vlan so generally wherever the trunk you have it will be the native vlan already you created the native vlan so this this you are going to configure that means port number 0 port number 1 okay in this range whatever it is available now this will become as a native vlan okay this will become the native vlan so this is the command okay so using this you are going to create the trunk okay and vlan 99 that means a management that is a management vlan i'll tell one more thing even without this line it will work okay even without the line okay this line your uh, trunk will start working okay so this is now so the next one okay so this is what we have done in the last class then after that you can give an okay you can give the ping command and there are small small things available so mostly it will be like uh, uh like show commands i will show that in the practical part okay in the tomorrow's class now the next very important thing what we are going to talk about means we are going to talk about okay the trunking dynamic trunking protocols okay so about this we are going to talk about in the next two three pages okay that will be the end of your lecture dynamic trunking protocol okay so dtp okay we can say is a dtp so what is dynamic trunking protocol you know what is trunking okay you understand trunking the basic concepts of trunking you understand now you can see switch ports can manually config to form the trunks so manually you can form the trunks yes in our lab okay that means in our lab we are going to configure the trunking manually okay manually only we are going to create then switch ports can also be configured to negotiate and establish a trunk with a connected peer okay so that means you can use some protocols okay they are called dtp protocols okay dynamic trunking protocols so this trunking protocols will automatically they will take care of the trunk it will automatically detect it will automatically detect okay and which which will be the trunking okay automatically it can select and it can configure so in the switches like 296035 these are all the latest switches okay you can see the uh, switch numbers this is okay we can see the model numbers so in in particular model okay they are having the dtp protocols so which is going to take care of okay the automatic okay trunking but we are not going to study about these protocols in this course okay we are going to manually configure the dynamic trunking protocol okay sorry trunking protocols manually we are going to do it okay we are not using any protocol in our labs now the next one is mode so there are so many modes available okay we i already told about the mode we can discuss it later what is that mode means see trunk mode you can make a link in a trunk mode that means you are make a port as a trunk then dynamic 
desirable dynamic auto and non negotiate so these are the four modes there are so many modes available but we are going to take only four so if you complete this four automatic uh, almost the lecture will be completed so dynamic auto mode dynamic desirable mode trunk mode and non negotiate mode so these are the no negotiate or non negotiate mode okay these are the modes available you can see this what is the modes okay we use access mode for creating the vlan we use the axos for creating the trunk we make the trunk we use the trunk so what is the difference so access means specify a non trunk it is not a trunk okay it is non tagged a single vlan layer interface so this is going to be a single vlan interface so this axos we used in the beginning we okay you can enter into a port fast ethernet 0 by 0 and you can make this as the access port to a particular vlan so access is a mode which you can make it for a particular vlan okay if you want okay i will show it i'll show the command to you you can see here what we have where we have done see i'm going to fast ethernet 0 by 3 and this fast ethernet 0 by 3 i want to put it in vlan 30 so how i'm going to put means you are using the command so the command is okay switch port access vlan 30 so this is access so by using the access what you can do means access mode you can make a particular port you can make a particular port or you can move a particular port to a vlan so that is a single port single vlan that port to, okay 0 by 3 is vlan 30 that's it so in 0 by 3 only vlan 30 data can move only vlan 30 data can move so in vlan okay in 0 by 3 vlan 20 packets cannot move okay that is the meaning so we okay what is access you understand now the next one is going to be the trunk okay the next one is the trunk you can see about the trunk also we discussed 0 to okay 0 by 1 by 2 i make this as a trunk means in the trunk all the vlan packets can move all the vlan packets can move in the trunk okay vlan 10 packets vlan 20 packets vlan 30 packets all the packets it can move in the trunk okay it will move in the trunk now you can see this so what is a access means only this is for a single vlan it is for a single vlan interface so what is trunk means specify the trunk vlan layer 2 okay all the vlans can move okay all the vlans can move in that all the all the packets of vlan okay we cannot use the word packet don't use the word packet it is frames because we are dealing with layer 2 okay we have to talk about only we have to use only okay frames so the frames of all the vlans can move in this trunk then the next one is you say dynamic okay so what is dynamic means this specifies that the interface convert into the sorry this specifies that the interface convert the link to a trunk link so that means it is going to be dynamic from access to the trunk or trunk to the access so dynamically it can change automatically dynamically it can change then dynamic desirable this specifies the interface activity okay actively attempts to convert the link to the trunk link so it can convert into the trunk but desirable desirable means okay if there is any attempt so attempt means like a try okay i just make it in a very simple way this two it can change from anything to anything okay it can change from anything to anything that means from access to trunk from trunk to access it can change okay this is the concept now you can see there is a table available here so in this table so what they are what what they are thinking what, what they are trying to say here means only only this four okay if you concentrate it is enough okay according to our uh, slides only this four things what is that means see this is a port and this is the another port okay fast ethernet 0 by 0 this is in one switch and this is in the another switch okay this is a switch and this is another switch so both are trunk now i'm just connecting these two mains automatically this is going to be the trunk 
there. I go to the same concept here, you can see. This is, I'm going to take one switch and this is the another switch. Okay, I'm going to have here access. Okay, this is access and this is access mains. Automatically, the both will be access. You, this is going to be an access one. That means VLAN 10 can communicate in that. Okay, see, take this. This is trunk and then trunk. So if both are trunk, that is going to be a trunk link. Then if two, two switches, one is in the access, the other one is going to be in the access mains. So access, access means it is going to be access. Then one in the trunk, okay, this is, I'm going to make this as a trunk. The next one is going to be in the access. Okay, I'm changing. Okay, I'm going to make it as a access. So in that case, so one is going to be in the trunk, the another one is in the access mains. This is having a limited connectivity. Okay, this is okay, a limited connectivity. That means this is going to act as a okay access only. Okay, there is some restrictions available. You cannot make it. Same thing. So one is in the access, the another one in the trunk mains. Okay, this is also going to be a limited connectivity. So this is the concept. So if you are going for the dynamic mains, okay, you see. I make dynamic auto, one I'm going to make it as dynamic and one I'm going to trunk mains, automatically it will convert into trunk. So this is, I'm going to make it trunk, the another one I put it in the auto. So auto means if this is trunk, automatically it will change to trunk. If this is access, it will automatically change it into access. Okay, this is. Then in the disable also the same thing, in the disable also it is same. So this is dynamic and this is access mains automatically the, the auto okay the dynamic will change it to the trunk okay this is the concept so what is this means if two are trunk automatically trunk if two are in access access one is in auto and another one is trunk means it is trunk one is in auto another one is in access means it will be access this is the point so you no need to memorize this okay but if you if you must know what are the different modes okay what are the different modes available only if, if you understand this it is enough so these combinations you no need to memorize it okay for your level you no need to memorize this particular concept okay now the next one is okay the next two three topics available we are going to discuss about okay after this the major concepts over so after this we are going to discuss only about the troubleshooting so troubleshooting means the problems Okay, what are all the uh, common issues? Okay, it will happen when you are going for the VLAN concept. Now, I'm going for the VLAN addressing issues. Okay, addressing issues, IP addressing issues. What is IP addressing issues means? You can see this, this diagram. I'll explain by using this diagram. Now, PC1, it is in VLAN 10, good. Then PC2, sorry, PC4, this is also going to be in the VLAN 10. Okay, and then this PC also is going to be in VLAN 10. So all the three, they are in VLAN 10. Okay, then S2. Okay, that means this is a trunk and this is a trunk. Okay, this is a trunk and trunk. So everything is now configured to the trunk. Okay, you can see trunk is configured. So they are going to be in the native VLAN. The trunk is available in the native VLAN. So everything is okay. But now what is the issue means the PC1, PC1 means this PC, PC1 is not able to communicate, cannot communicate to the server because it is having the wrong IP address configured. So that means this is not able to co okay, communicate with the server. Okay, it is not available, okay, it is not able to configure with the server. What is the reason? Okay, nothing. You see the IP address. 172.17.10 but here it is 172.72 so both are not having same IP address it is not okay see 172 172.10 here 172.17 so even though they are in the same VLAN the IP address is different IP address is different so they are not able to communicate okay so 172 172.10 this is 172 172 10 network Okay, 172, 172 network, but this is 172, 17. So they are not able to communicate even though you configured them in VLAN 10. This is the issue. So 
inside the vlan you have to maintain the same ip address that means the network ip address should be same okay if you use different different ip address even if they are in the same vlan they will not communicate i will give a very simple example why you want to go such a complicated example very simple example you say all are in vlan 10 very good now for the first pc i give the ip address 10.0.0.1 Okay, I'm giving the IP address 10.0.0.1 is IP address I'm giving. For this machine, I'm giving the IP address 20. 20.0.0.1. I'm giving the IP address like this. They are in both in VLAN 10. Okay, so you can communicate means no, you cannot communicate. No. Okay, because they are in the different. Okay, the IP address is entirely different, so they may not communicate with each other. So this is the. Uh, ip address issues now i'm going to the next one the next one is okay you are having a flow chart okay to find to deduct the errors okay how to deduct the errors okay now you can see no connection among the devices in the same vlan so in the same vlan i'm not able to communicate okay yes i'm not going to communicate okay i'm going for is the port in the correct vlan first you have to check the vlan yes in the above case both the vlan are in 10 yes now you go to the next one okay go to the next one so if it is no means you can change it you make everything into same vlan then so go to the next one vlan present in the vlan database okay you check it in the vlan and check okay whether the vlan is available yes then verify the connection so these are all some steps they are giving the flow charts they are giving so how you can you can uh, check if any error happen so suppose troubleshooting okay troubleshooting if there is any problem how you can check okay so first issue the major issue will be in the ip address then the next issue will be in the mode the next issues will be available in the mode okay so if trunk suppose if you are not able to okay you can say trunk so in the trunk it should be in the native trunk if it is not available okay you can change the native vlan so you how to check the modes okay the modes so we already discussed access mode access mode means it will be in the access mode okay trunk mode trunk mode it will be in the trunk so trunk sir so under dynamic it will be in the trunk dynamic and access it will be in the access so you how to check different Uh, modes the modes are correct or not okay these are the things then common problems with the trunk so what will be the problems means okay this is this will be the problem this four so people they will not use okay the correct modes one port they will make it as a trunk the another one they will make it as a access they will communicate means no they cannot communicate so the correct mode you how to okay there will be some mismatches this this two are the problem okay what is this means see one port i make it is dynamic auto the another one i make it as access means it will become access one mode okay i make it is dynamic auto the other one i make it as a trunk means it will become trunk one i make it into dynamic auto the next one i'm going to make it as dynamic desirable means it will act as the trunk so this is this is the concept so so two two ports you have to make it in a connect correct way but why where the problem the problem will come in this place okay the problem will come in this place what is the problem so one you make in the trunk and another you make it a access means issue starts the problem will be available okay the one port you make it into access okay then the another port you make it into trunk means okay this is going to be the problem so these two things it will not match so the um, the remaining things it is going to work in some way but one in trunk one in access you cannot most of the students in our labs we will face this problem what is that okay teacher i am not able to communicate okay with the vlan 10 to vlan 10 so the problem is so one will be in the trunk the another one will be in the access so this this is the problem okay so now the next one is okay you can go for the designs vlan a design guidelines okay if you want to design a vlan what are the guidelines available okay so what is the guideline don't touch vlan 1 okay don't touch vlan 
because it is a default VLAN you cannot you cannot okay uh, change it you cannot delete it okay you can change it but you cannot delete or you cannot rename okay you cannot rename so there are some issues available in VLAN 1 so VLAN 1 you cannot do there shut down all the unused switch ports so whatever the switch ports available in your switch you have to shut down it okay then you can create then separate a management okay there should be a management VLAN okay so in our lab we created VLAN 99 okay VLAN 99 as the management VLAN we created then change the management VLAN to the VLAN and other than VLAN 1 so usually we used to give VLAN 99 okay that is a common practice we are doing in our lab so VLAN 99 we used to make it as the uh, management VLAN ensure that only one device in the management VLAN can connect to the switches so make sure only one person can access this management VLAN so if you have SSH okay SSH connections also you can have to access the VLAN how to configure the SSH I already uploaded the video okay the video is available you can see how to configure the uh, SSH separately then you have to be clear okay you have to be very clear about the ports if you are not very clear about the ports go for dynamic okay go for the dynamic so put it in the dynamic okay automatically the problem will be solved so disable the auto negotiate okay don't do the auto negotiate okay so go for the dynamic okay in the dynamic desirable if you make dynamic desirable also it is enough okay actually dynamic desirable also not allowed okay not not advisable see do not use auto or disable within the switch port modes okay so manually if you configure it will be good okay it will be good and you can use some protocols dynamic trunking protocol this is we are not going to cover in this course so in the next year you will study about this okay in uh, internet working or some other courses you will study about that dynamic okay uh, trunking protocols you will study okay so with this I am completing this lecture so tomorrow we are going for the lab okay the lab part we will discuss it